In this video, we are going to see how we can use list together with common operators. So let's create a new file. Let's call it list operations. So whenever I speak of an operation in my course, then I typically mean um, that we use some operands and connect them together with an operator like plus, for example. So let's um, make an example. Let's create a list of names just as we did in the previous video. And let's put in there the names, for example, Berthold, German name, but also Oliver, also German name, but also international name, of course, and Karl with a C. Okay. So now we have a list with these elements as strings. In memory, this would look somewhat like this. We have a list object. And by now we know that list objects have a little bit more space in, in them um, because that uh, allows us to append some stuff at the end without having to create new list objects. Now let's go ahead and um, abbreviate that a little bit. So the first element, for example, would be Berthold. So it would be a string object. I simply write it here as B. Let's go ahead, create another string object here, which would be O. And let's take another string object here. This would be C. And uh, we call the list names. So let's simply go ahead and make a variable called names from the global scope, simply reference the list object here. So what could we do here using operators? So one thing that we have already seen in chapter one is that we can take a list and we can add to that, for example, another list. So that may strike you um, in a weird way. So how can I add lists together? Does that even make sense? So let's use a second list and let's put in the names, for example, Dietrich and another German name, which would be Eves here, just to have a variation of a couple of names. And the answer to the question, can two list objects, so the list names and the other list object here, can they actually be added together? And the answer is yes. And what we get back is another list object here with now five elements in there. So when I executed this cell here, names plus a new list, Dietrich and Eves, let's see how that looks like in memory. So first of all, Python reads here from left to right. Therefore, it, leads, it, it reads the, the variable names first. This is simply a, a reference lookup. Then it says plus, and then it has to, on the right-hand side, first create a new list object on the fly. And on the fly simply means we create it without giving it a name. So let's go ahead and create another list object here on the fly, so to say. And the first, the first element in there would simply be Dietrich. So let's abbreviate that with a D. And the second one, the second element would be Eves. So let's uh, abbreviate that with a Y. Now we have two list objects and now we are concatenating them. That is the technical term concatenation. We've also uh, seen that um, when we talked about um, the string data type in chapter six. So I'm now going ahead and I want to add this list with this list here. And what Python does is the list, the, the addition uh, operator, it simply goes ahead and asks the left hand operand. So this list here, hey, can you add yourself to this one here? And then the list object says, well, this is also a list. I know how to do that. And then the two, the two of them go, uh, go ahead. And what they do is they are going to create a third list object. And now the third list object will be created like that. The first element will be the first element from the left operand. So we will simply get a reference to here. Then we get a reference here and another reference here. The same holds true for D and Y. So we get references right here, however, these are not the first and second reference. These are here references uh, four and five, right? And now um, this list object here is basically the return value that is given back to us. So I indicate that with a red dotted line here. So that is what we see below the cell. And I could have stored that um, in a variable. Maybe let's do that and call that more names equals or set it equal uh, or assign to it the result of that. And now more names would be this longer list. And that would mean uh, we create a new variable here. Let's call it more names as we did in JupyterLab. 
and put a reference right here. So whenever you remember that from the very first chapter, whenever I put a red dotted line going from right to left, this simply means we get back a reference to this object. And then it depends on us what we do with the reference. Here I store it in the variable more names. And uh, now this uh, list object is going to survive. And this list object here is not going to survive because it has no further reference going to it. So therefore the garbage collector is going ahead and will simply remove this list object here and the references. These two string objects, however, they are going to survive mainly because they have a reference from this new list object. So what do we learn from that here? So first we can add two list objects together. We call that concatenation. And also what we see here from the diagram I drew is concatenation also is very much similar to the uh, concept of a shallow copy. So now we have the old, the original names list with uh, three references, and we have a new uh, list here, more names, with also uh, a couple of references. And the first three references reference objects that are also referenced by the uh, names list, right? So these three objects here, they are shared between the first and the second list. And that is similar to the concept of a shallow copy that we saw a couple of videos ago, okay? So let's continue. Um, what other operators are there? Well, just as we did with string concatenation in chapter six, well, there's also um, um, a multiplication operator. So let's say I say two times names and I get back Berthold, Oliver, Karl, Berthold, Oliver, Karl. So how, how does that look like in, um, in uh, memory? So how that looks like is as follows. A new list object is created on the fly, just like that. And now let me maybe use a different color so that uh, you can still <laughs> recognize where something is going. So the first reference is of course going to be because that is the first reference of the original names list and I'm multiplying two times names here. So that is why uh, we take all the references from this list here. So the second reference is going here. The third reference is going here. And now you may wonder where's this reference here going? Well, this reference is of course also going here and this one here and this one here. So now we have those three objects here, B, O, and C, the string objects, they have now many references going to them. So that is what, uh, what happens here. So when we multiply a list, we get back a new list object where the references are taken from the list object that is being multiplied and then the references are simply repeated. So what we learn from that is that Python is a very, um, a very memory efficient language. So all the operations in this video that we saw so far, but also um, all the, um, the example I showed you in the video um, shallow versus deep copies, um, they show you that whenever it's possible, Python does not copy the actual data object. So data objects meaning the, the string objects here with the actual data in it. So when, whenever Python can do so, it simply goes ahead and copies all the references and nothing but references. However, this is also similar to the concept of a shallow copy. So we must be careful here. Let's assume that B, O, and C were themselves mutable objects. So they are string objects, they are immutable, but let's assume that they are mutable. So what would that mean if I change, if I went via this variable here to the first uh, reference here and I made a change to that object here? Well, I would also see the same change in the fourth spot here in index number three, right? Because index number zero and index number three are really pointing to the same object. So when, whenever these objects here, the data objects, they are immutable and the most important immutable uh, data types that we know are of course the string data type, but also all the numeric data types, then everything will be fine because we can never make a change to that. However, if we use a nested data structure and we have, let's say a list here, or maybe some other data structure that can be mutated, then we have a big problem. Then that would mean if we make a change via the first reference, we would see the very same change via the, the fourth reference here, right? So we have to be careful here. And this all goes back to the video shallow versus deep copies. So if you understand shallow versus deep copies, then um, you should also understand um, everything uh, that is right here. And all the details that I show you in the videos, as a beginner, most likely you're not going to need to know that, but 
um, after a while, when you uh, write bigger programs, you will run into problems where some outcome of, of some algorithm is not what you expect it to be. And then one, one thing you should have in your mind is that Python at many places makes shallow copies or things uh, or operations that are comparable to a shallow copy. So copying only references and not the data it themselves. And whenever that happens behind the scenes without you knowing, then maybe that could be a source of a semantic error in your programs, right? So I want to plant that in the back of your head if you want to continue to become good at Python and maybe uh, want to go into a data science career, then you should really um, focus into these details as well because at some point uh, not knowing that will bite you. Okay, so let's see um, what else is there to be said. So of course, obviously, we could also multiply names um, from the right and not only from the left with a number. So now we repeat the same elements three times um, and that is uh, the two operators plus and multiplication that are supported not only by numbers but also by sequences in general or in abstract terms. So n remember how concatenation also worked for strings and now it also works for lists here and that is not an accident. The reason why um, concatenation works for both strings and lists is simply because both strings and lists are examples of sequences. Okay, the abstract data type or the abstract concept of a sequence um, is basically what um, is behind all that. So concatenation works for sequences in general usually and lists and strings are simply examples of a, of a sequence and therefore uh, concatenation also works for these data types. Now let's look into something that is not uh, strictly speaking an operator, but that looks like an operator and that is uh, very valuable to know and you will see it all the time in Python code. So this is, let me give it uh, a new header, unpacking. And there will also be the opposite of that called packing in future videos. So what is unpacking? So let's assume you want to create a new list and the new list is going to be a list of names because we, it's just the example here. So let's say the first name uh, in the list is going to be Achim, a German name. And the last name will be Xavier. That's probably an international name, also works in German. So now let's assume that what you want to do is you want to put the names from, from the names list. So the names Berthold, Oliver and Karl, you want to put these three names inside this list inside this list here. Well, what you could do, of course, what we saw in the previous video is you could simply refer to the names list here. However, then we don't have a flat data structure. We have a nested data structure. Nested meaning um, some elements of the uh, outer list contain a reference to some inner list that itself contains the data. So that is a nested data structure. But what we want to do instead is Instead of creating a nested data structure, I want to do the opposite. I want to create a new list with flat data. And whenever you hear, hear a programmer use the term flat, what they mean is they mean that there is only one object, one container that holds all the references to all the data objects in a flat way. Okay, there is no hidden layer where you have to uh, grab into, into to, in order to get to some um, deeply nested um, uh, data piece. So how can we do that? How can I get rid of these lists here, this list syntax here? So there is um, a syntax in Python called the unpacking um, syntax, and we will simply write a star operator here on asterisk. So the star names, see, maybe I leave that here in as an example so that you can review it, so, re so that you can review it later and maybe also see uh, the, the difference right away. If I put the star right here, what you see now is that we have the same names in one list object, but there is no inner list object. Okay, so we have flattened the data. And in a future um, exercise, um, in uh, I think it is in chapter nine, when we once we talked about mappings, um, there will be an exercise in the book where um, one of the tasks is you are given nested data and you have to make it flat. And what we mean by flattening the data is by simply um, making sure that you only have one container object that holds all the data in a flat manner. And strictly speaking, this here is not an operator. This is, it, this is some uh, literal built-in syntax that uh, looks like an operator, but uh, it is not uh, comparable uh, to a star operator in this um, context here. In this context, having a left and a right operand 
that is when the star operator is really an operator. But uh, written in, uh, in this way, this is really uh, not an operator, but the unpacking syntax. But it's just a minor detail, don't worry about that. Um, I just put it inside this video because it looks very much the same and it's worthwhile to know. You often see that when, we, when you call functions and you want to uh, unpack, um, um, let's say some container and you want to um, pass the, um, the arguments in a flat way, then you often see that in function calls, for example. But we will see that um, in future videos a couple of times. So just um, understand that this just unpacks the data in the container. Okay, so uh, maybe another way uh, for those of you who still don't get this is to write it in a, in, a, in a manual way, so to say. So this is the same, so this line here is the same as if I use the index operator just like that. So let's copy that, let's copy that like that, and let's copy it one more time. This would give me the same result. However, oftentimes when you work with list-like data, you don't know how many elements are in a list. So here I know that there are three names in the names list. Therefore, I can uh, fully enumerate all of them by saying names zero, names one, names two. But sometimes the list is, has like a million entries, right? A million uh, elements. And then uh, you couldn't write that with your hands. So this is just a manual, so to say, way of writing everything out. But uh, the um, unpacking syntax basically does that here for you. It, it basically automates the indexing here, okay? So uh, worthwhile to know. So now let's finish this video by uh, talking about another uh, operator or another set of operators, uh, namely the uh, comparison operators that we saw the first time in chapter three when we talked about the so-called relational operators. Relational operators are all the operators that compare a left and a right operand and uh, that also works in the context of lists, of course. So let's do the following. I'm going and I'm going to use my names list ideally. And let's make a uh, let's copy paste uh, what we see below the below the cell here. And let's go ahead and let's take the names list and compare it um, regarding equality to what I just copy pasted here. And maybe if you want replace the single quotes with double quotes, as you know that I personally prefer the double quotes, but you could also simply leave the single quotes, wouldn't make any difference. So now we get back true. Why? Because I have a list on the left-hand side and I created a new list on the right-hand side on the fly. And both lists contain the same elements or elements with the same value, that is important, in the same order, okay? And if that is the case, then both lists compare equal. Let's go ahead and check what happens if I add another element here on the left-hand side? Let's say I go ahead and I add Carl with a K and now I get back false. Why? Because the list on the left-hand side obviously has uh, not the same number of elements than on the right-hand side and then therefore the elements are just different. Also, if I go ahead and um, compare names to the, the actual uh, names list here, and I change Carl with a C into Carl with a K, I of course also get a false, okay? Now let's um, look at another operator. This is now equality comparison, but let's also um, look at a couple of others. For example, just to remind you that it exists, the unequal operator, it, in Python we, we are going to write that as exclamation mark equals. This is now going to return the opposite of the, um, equal of the equality comparison operator. Um, since that here was false, this here must be true, right? Because it's the same expression uh, in, and uh, the only difference being instead of equality, we are checking for inequality. So these are the opposite cases. And now you may wonder, um, how do the uh, uh, smaller than operators work in this context? Well, let's do that. Let's copy maybe this cell here. And let's go ahead and ask the question, is the left-hand side smaller than the right-hand side? And intuitively, this is true. And the reason why is because they are all equal, except for the last entry here. And uh, if the, the list on the left-hand side contains um, an entry, uh, all the entries are the same uh, on the right-hand side, except for it does not contain all the elements, then it is smaller, right? But also note how Let's copy paste that. 
if instead of uh, comparing that to a list with more elements, I compare that to a list, maybe let's put names above here one more time. So if I compare the names list with a list of the same size, but Carl here is not written with a C but a K, then this also gives me back true. Why? Because um, Python would go ahead from left to right and compare uh, Berthold, so this Berthold with this Berthold and this Oliver with this Oliver. So far so good, they are equal. But then it compares Carl here with a C with this Carl with a K and the Carl with a C, let's also write that here, Carl with a C is smaller than, it is strictly smaller than Carl with a K because of how string comparison works. And therefore, because of that result, um, the entire list is also considered smaller than the other list here. Okay, and of course, if you do that the other way around, so let's maybe do another example. Let's copy this list here. And let's say, ask the question, is that smaller than Carl or the names list with Carl where that has the Carl with a C in it? Now we get back false. Why? Because Carl with a K is now not smaller than Carl with a C, right? It, it Alphabetically, it comes after Carl with a C. So that is also how you can use comparison. So the exact rules of how these operators work are exactly the same um, as um, we saw in the chapter on string comparison. So first of all, it, so in other words, to summarize that, um, Python takes both sides, the left and the right hand operand, and it goes in a stepwise fashion. It compares element by element. And once the first pair of elements, in the, by co when comparing in a pairwise fashion, is not equal, then a decision has to be made whether or not the left-hand side is smaller or greater than the right-hand side. And the decision that is made um, will be done according to um, basically the rule where that uh, has to be applied when the two objects are simply compared to each other, right? So, and then in the rare case where all the elements are equal, and let's say one of the two lists has one more element, then automatically the list that has one more element is considered greater. It's intuitively so, right? Because um, this is how we would interpret this uh, sign here, this symbol in an intuitive way just as well. Okay, so um, that is operator. So relational operators work for lists. A couple of arithmetic operators work for lists as we saw. They do concatenation. Please keep in mind that um, the, the way this um, Concatenation is done uh, follows the same logic as we saw in when when we talked about cello copies, and also the unpacking uh, syntax here is quite nice to know. It's not strictly an operator, but uh, you could actually view it kind of as an operator here. Okay, so uh, that uh, leaves us here with this video uh, when we talked about list operators and operations, and uh, in the next video. We are going to see further details about what to uh, look out for when working with list objects. So I see you then.